What's up guys? Kevin here, back with another video, back with another coffee break for November. Let's go. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, hi, my name is Kevin. I do fashion content, footwear content, sneakers, like all that stuff. Um, and this is coffee break, which is a monthly breakdown of releases, upcoming or rumors, as well as some stuff from the archive, which is like stuff from like years gone by that I thought are, you know, kind of deserve a little bit of love. So yeah, this is a monthly thing, sort of like a video podcast. We talk about some cool shit while also making some coffee as well. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. God, I feel so cringe every time I say that. So without further ado, coffee break November. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a iced pour over. This is a coffee company from Italy. Um, it is an Ethiopian, uh, an Ethiopian bean, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, it's called Uraga Pear Candy Lemonade and Marzipan. I will leave uh, a link in the description down below where you can find these beans, but let's get started. So I typically, for an ice pour over, because it's gonna be a little bit more diluted, I'm gonna do a one to 10. So for every one gram of coffee, I'm gonna do 10 grams of water. I have about 40 grams of beans. I use a Chemex, uh, if you guys don't know, for my pour overs. You can also use a V60. All right, so without boring you guys, uh, let's talk about the first release. Uh, the release that I wanna talk about is the Adidas consortium pack or I guess competition um, this was done quite a few months ago on the confirmed app where they picked a bunch of their collaborators and kind of pitted them up against each other the first round was classic so that included uh, the Samba the gazelle and the superstar unfortunately one of my favorite picks didn't win and that was the house studio superstar uh, it was also the only superstar on the list which I felt like a lot of people, God damn it, my Discord. I feel like a lot of people just ended up choosing Sambas just because they were sort of trendy uh, at the moment and I thought it was a huge missed opportunity. I really liked the details of the House Studio Superstar, but oh well, it happens. But uh, the winners were uh, Kashina, Offspring, and Extra Butter, Sneaker Politics, and Nice Kicks. Um, I'm going to be doing a review of most of these because I'm going to get them in, kind of uh, see how they look in hand and do a video compilation. Uh, compli Why did I say it like that? Video compilation of all of these up against each other. I believe all of them have released now from at least the first round of the competition. Uh, the second round is going to be, I believe, performance driven. Um, and then the final round is like a retro runner and then I think the winner gets to make whatever sort of shoe that they want. And if I remember correctly, they are making an Oswego. But yeah, I really like the Kashina. The Kashina pair um, has the Korean uh, flower um, on the back as well as a yellow back tab. It just looks really clean, really simple, um, very wearable, like everyday pair of shoes. Uh, the Offspring looked really nice, fantastic materials, um, and they were all priced in between 120 and 130 The materials of the Offspring look amazing, look immaculate really, um, and they have this sort of rip-off bandana, so it's a very, very, very neutral until you take off the, the rippable parts that reveal a bandana pattern. Um, the end pair has that tapestry look, I thought that was really nice as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the materials that they chose. It's like a sort of burlap sack almost, as well as some nice suede. Um, I really like the extra butter pair as well. It was one of the standout pairs. Um, it has like a cyan blue, as well as some cross stitching. Um, it's inspired by the City of Gods, a Brazilian film. Um, I thought it was a really cool look. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of the extra butter on the, um, on the heel part. I think it kind of kind of cheapens the look a little bit and I get the inspiration behind it but just personally not my favorite but that pair looks great as well um, and then I really like the nice kicks pair it has a rope lace it's a very classic sort of high um, 
high quality looking pair of Sambas. Um, I do think, personally, I think a lot of the first rounds, because they were limited to classics, a lot of them played it safe and the ones that kind of delved outside of that safe space, I guess, um, didn't win. I'm still very sour that the house studios uh, like Superstar didn't win, um, but luckily they have another release that just happened that I'm going to be talking about, which was the Velo Samba. So the house studios Velo Samba, I thought this was also really, I was very, very excited for it to happen, but also I was a little bit taken aback. I was kind of taken aback mainly because of the fact that Tokyo, why are you scratching the couch? So the Velo Samba is a modified Samba that is geared towards those who bike and commute, etc. They have a little attachment at the bottom as well as they added some more stability uh, on the sole. Um, so the Velo Samba, it released, it's one of 300, only released at House Studios at Oh my God, like when I copped it, it was like on Thanksgiving at 3 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. It was 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I thought I wasn't going to be able to get it. Like luckily, I was able to lock in a size 9. Um, I was talking to John, who is the co-founder of Hal Studios, and I asked him like, hey, what's, what's my best option to pick up a pair? And he says that size 9 had the most stock, and I can honestly make a size nine work, just slip another insole in there. So I'm happy to get that in. It was 260 Australian. Um, after shipping, it was like 170, 180 or something like that. Hopefully uh, this pair arrives to me on time just because the ASICS release that they just had, the Glacier, um, that one only, yeah, like so after months of, uh, of waiting, the, the Australian post unfortunately lost my pair, so I wasn't able to pick it up. I was planning on doing a three-part sort of collab, or not collaboration, three-part comparison um, between the part one, two, and three, the forest, the original brown pair, and then the glacier. Um, like luckily I was also able to pick it up secondhand on a secondary market, so I'm gonna be getting that in and hopefully a review soon. But the Velo Samba's super, super sick shoe. Very unfortunate in my opinion that it was one of 300. Um, I'm hoping that Maybe they have more Adidas products lined up because uh, I really do think that they have a huge capacity and huge capability and potential to be one of those all-star collaborators that Adidas really does need right now. So another one that I talked about briefly in a previous coffee break, um, finally the Terrell Winston uh, part two of his Reebok collaboration came out. It features a Club C as well as a classic um, both pairs look pretty nice, look pretty sick. Um, I am supposed to be getting them in sometime today and I'm gonna be doing a review soon, so stay tuned for that. So the leather quality looks great. The comparisons between the first one and the second Club C, um, the only ones that I can really see is that there's no cow fur. Um, instead, it's a Club C Revenge where the back tab is reflective and then they replaced that little uh, like Reebok window. Instead of it being like a fabric, it is a tumbled leather now, as well as the tongue is a slimmed down tongue, as well as like obviously the color of the inner lining, I guess I should say, is that classic Reebok blue. So a pair that I think is also really cool, coffee is done by the way, really cool is a cool Hoka collaboration. I think honestly Hoka, Asics, Merrill and like honestly Adidas, those guys have been churning out some really, really good product. I think Nike, because of the fact that they're dropping the ball and they oversaturated the market and they're not choosing their collaborators um, pri properly or not choosing the, the ones that are like a little bit more um, underground, I should say, or a little bit smaller, more dedicated uh, brands, I feel like these other companies are able to come in, make a really cool impact and make that like grassroots sort of uh, collaborations happen. So Hoka's one of them. They did a collaboration with a running brand called Satisfy Running. Uh, this is their Clifton, I believe it's the LS. Yes, the U Clifton LS. Um, I think this was, this just released a few days ago. Um, they have this cream pair, 
which I thought was really nice, as well as they have a navy pair. I have the navy pair that should be coming in anytime today. I'm gonna to be doing a review of both of these, of both of them. Um, really, really cool shoe. Um, very, very extremely light, and I love the styling of uh, both pairs. I think this one, definitely that, that neutral sort of um, vibe, and then the other pair definitely has that more Gorp inspiration. I think this pair will be great for every day. Same with the other pair. Um, extremely, extremely light. And another pair that I thought was really cool that released and that I also have another section of it is the new Kiko Kostadinov, um Asics Novalis. Uh, this is the gel uh, Terra Moya. I believe, and this is in the Obsidian colorway. Really, really cool looking shoe. It has that sort of like sleek sort of vibe. I'm a big fan of the sole, extremely comfortable. Um, I have another review of these coming in soon. Um, I personally think that the Obsidian colorway is the best colorway. They have a mustard colorway as well as something that looks like a burgundy. Uh, I think this is the most killer colorway. Just that top down view makes it look so sleek. Um, it's wrapped in this all synthetic leather. Uh, I think Kiko has been doing a great job with his ASICS partnership. Um, I think that although this is a bit pricier, priced at $250, I think creating a new mold and a new design and them honestly not really repeating designs, them constantly trying to evolve, move forward, um, I think 250 is an all right price, especially if you're comparing to other designer collaborations like Jack Moose or um, really like anything else that is more of that designer collaboration. Uh, like 250 is, it's, it's expensive, but you are getting that sort of higher tier design product. Yeah, so Gel Teller, Terra Moya, Asics Novalis. Another thing that I thought was really cool, another ASICS, a bunch of ASICS products. I think I should just group all the ASICS products together. So it is the Auto ASICS 958. I think this has such an interesting sole and I really like the upper. I was talking to a few friends um, and I told them that I felt like a lot of those low slim profile shoes are gonna come back into, I guess, the style zeitgeist because we've been on that sort of bulky shoe for such a long time. And I know that it's been trickling and it's been happening with the Samba and then even way, way, way before the Stan Smith was the it shoe and then the Gazelle. But a lot of those like low profile shoes are gonna be starting to come at least more into the mainstream. I know in niche circles, they've always been there. Um, but the Auto 958, I think takes a new avenue to it. And I think it has such an interesting sole very aggressive and i'm a big fan of it um i'm not i'm i'm interested to see what it'll look like in hand i haven't um like decided to pick it up i'm waiting for it to hit sales in certain areas so um maybe that'll come soon who knows but i do like that black and green color i do think that it would be really really sick to see it in like an all black just like a murdered out black with that patent leather i think it'd be really really sick Another ASICS uh, collaboration release is the unaffected uh, ASICS Gel Kyano 14. The Gel Kyano 14 really had um, a slow burn, but now the ball is like really just rolling. First, it started with the Awake uh, like collaboration, and then it sort of like snowballed even more with the Jown collaboration, and now I think it really is in sort of full motion. Um, the brand unaffected is a Korean brand um, it is stocked at all the bigger Korean retailers and then they actually, I believe, dropped earlier, um, I think a few months ago actually, had they had an early release at a few of their retailers in Korea. Um, very, very sick shoe where it's the gel Kyano 14, but it has that running inspired uh, like quick lay system where it's almost like the Solomon like XT4, XT6 sort of quick lacing. Um, I thought it was really cool. I really like the white color as well as the green color. I mean, to be honest, all three colors are pretty sick, but I thought the white and then the green were the most standout colors, I would say. Um, big, big fan of those. Uh, I haven't placed an order in, of course, because I have so many things coming in and I need a review. I want to make sure that I'm able to keep up with it. But that's another pair that is on my radar that I do want to get in hand. Another release, oh my god, dude, I have so many ASICs releases. Uh, the Gel Quantum Kinetic in Birch. Uh, I thought this is such a sick looking shoe. So 
I think it's very adjacent to Kiko's first A6 collaboration, the Gelbers 1, which I actually have. The Gelbers 1. So in the birch color as well, um, when people saw A6 and birch immediately, they went to this. Um, I do think that it is sort of adjacent, but this one definitely has that more like neutral gray while that one is a little bit more brown tonish. Um, I'm a huge fan of the gel quantum because I think it looks super super sick and it looks that retro futuristic look that ASICS is able to nail down so well um, and a lot of the gel quantum technology I really do think it's super comfortable. Again 250 retail I haven't decided to pick it up yet still waiting for some more markdowns or sales before I'm picking it up but I do think if you guys are looking for it, I think it's a fantastic pair that you guys should check out. Another one is Costs Asics GT 2160. Um, I think this is such a cool, interesting looking pair. I really do like the sole of it. Costs is a Shenzhen uh, based uh, brand. Um, they have a lot of clean lines, clean neutral colors. Um, I'm a big fan of the way that they sort of made it simplified. Not a huge fan of the co-branded laces because I do think it looks a little gaudy, but I do think that having just a neutral pair of laces, I think this is a very, very sick, simple pair of shoes. Um, if you guys are looking for that more understated, low-key sort of collaborative effort, I think the Cost 2160 or GT 2160 is definitely one of the ones that you should look for. Alright, so the last ASICs, I should say, for the release side, I guess. Man, I, I feel like I've, I'm not sponsored by ASICs, but I would love to. Please, if anyone's at ASICs, tap in. Please, I'll do it. I'll do it for like a pair of laces. Please. Um, it's the Gallery Department 2160. Um, I included this on the list. I like how I said like, oh, please, A6 sponsor me, but I'm about to like go in on the shoe. I'm, I'm, un I'm not a big fan of it. I thought it was sort of a meh uh, collaboration. I wasn't a big fan of it. I didn't really vibe with the paint splatters on a retro runner. Um, I think a lot of that paint splatter detailing has been done better in other classic heritage silhouettes. I think it is done better on you know, um, the Margella, like German army trainers, like obviously I think doing it on just a basic pair or not a basic pair, but a classic pair of runners, it just doesn't do it for me as well as it, in my eyes, it looked a little bit cheap. Um, I know that it's hyped and then it's limited to complex con, but I don't think that is a good enough of a reason to consider a product good or, um, valued in that way, um, I thought this was a swing and a miss in my opinion. Um, I don't even know if this is truly a official collaboration or if it was something done just by gallery department because I know that they do have some sort of a partnership but I don't know if this is like the full collaboration or is it just like a one-off sort of product. All right, so um, I have one pair of Vans to talk about and that is the advisory board crystals uh, Skate High EXT. Uh, that is a mouthful of a shoe, but it is essentially a reinterpretation of the Skate High. They sort of turned it into a mid-cut, double-layered shoe. I know that sounds crazy, but if you guys are curious, please check out my review. I'm going to leave a card somewhere up here. Um, but I do think it is a very cool take, very interesting take, um, and I think this is one of their um, best collaborations in quite a while. I'm talking about Vans. Um, I think they chose this partnership very interestingly and very well. I like that they gave them the freedom and the, um, the resources to do something weird and funky like this because I don't really see any other company really allowing them to like really deconstruct and redo and change up how their classic silhouette looks like. Just a quick look, um, if you guys are curious. Here is their black and white colorway. It is a mismatch color. They also have an all accru cream color that they released. Again, if you guys want more details or on foot or anything like that, please check out my video. Again, on my channel, link in the description, card somewhere. Very, very cool looking shoe. I definitely do see a lot of opportunities to do some weird, funky stuff with it. Um, great, great collaborative effort. 
I have one pair of Nikes uh, to talk about, but before I do that, the coffee has been calling my name. I can't ignore her anymore. excuse to have another cup of coffee oh wow pretty fire cup of coffee anyways the one Nike or I guess Jordan shoe that I was um, really happy about was the Ama Manier Jordan 5 so funny enough there was news that broke that James Whitner um, is using sneakers or is involved in money laundering through sneakers Long story short, he was selling to a middleman. That middleman was using sneakers as a middle product to exchange. And because there is no official currency transfer between the Chinese Yuan and the USD, you're using that as sort of that middle currency where you would pay these brokers and then they would swap the money over. Um, essentially, huge story. It's been going on for quite a few years now. I believe uh, James Whitner's partner was initially caught um, earlier last year, if I remember correctly, um, and then they've been cooperating with police. Um, he hasn't, James Whitner hasn't been charged yet, but this information is now out in the wild. Um, they did release a statement that they have been targeted unfairly because they are successful and that they are helping the community and that they are just, um, essentially an easy target for them to target and say tax fraud slash money laundering etc um i can't speculate what happened i can't do any of that the only thing that i can say is that social status and ama manier low key they've been kind of known to backdoor now i don't know to the extent of fucking money laundering where the money might be dirty and coming from illegal sources but there is kind of like a, like, oh, they backdoor. And I know a lot of stores do backdoor, but they backdoor like heavily. Like they'll get like multiple size runs of shoes and then they'll probably only drop like a size run or even half a size run or something like that and just say like, oh, it was limited, etc. But I digress. <laughs> the Jordan 5s that they release are pretty fire. Um, I really like both the Dusk and Dawn colorway. I am a little bit more partial towards the Dawn colorway. Um, I think the Dusk colorway is the most, or more attractive to people just because it's a black sneaker, as well as it has that classic, almost like a, like that Ama Manier signature burgundy, you know? Um, but personally, I think the Dawn colorway, they knocked it out of the part with that Photon Dust and then that blue. It almost feels like an OG colorway, you know? Like, it's like, it's like I can't, really put my finger on it. I really do like that they slim down the collar. Um, I used to wear fives a lot and my biggest issue with fives is that the collar bubbles would like rub up against each other and it would just scuff up the nubuck or the suede or the leather or like whatever it was made out of. Um, so I wasn't, um, every time I wore fives it felt chunky, clunky and then it used to just rub. So I just ended up just opting in for a skinnier silhouette. So the Amma Manier 5s, um, I was able to secure both pairs. They're coming in. Um, we'll see how it goes for their partnership upcoming. I do think that these 5s are probably my second favorite, maybe third. The 4 and the 5s, they kind of go back and forth for me because I do like the 4s. It's a very nice looking shoe, but I think the design of the 5s, because the 4 is just an all flooded, you know, um, like violet ore, if I remember correctly, I think that's what the material is called, violet ore color. But I think the fives definitely have that more like, a, a little bit more to it, you know? Now, I have quite a few Adidas pairs on the list and I'm just gonna be talking about them. Uh, first one is the Adsum Adidas Samba Millennial. It is an indoor uh, football slash soccer uh, shoe. Very, very cool. I really like that retro look. I'm a big fan of the Samba Millennial. I remember that they were really popping back in the day. 
um, and then with the resurgence of the Samba, I think Adidas is doing the right thing where they're not sort of digging too deep into just the Samba. They're kind of looking at adjacent models like the, like the Gazelle, um, like a few of the Special pairs. Um, so I think the Samba Millennial is a really cool pair and it was only released in Addison, New York. So I think it's a very cool little um, limited drop to kind of test the market to see how well the Samba Millennial will do compared to the Samba. Um, it's a really sick shoe. Um, I haven't picked it up yet, um, but again, something on my list. There's so many like good shoes coming out in this Q4 era that I'm like, I'm like stressing right now, bro. Oh, another cool shoe is the Adidas Navy Samba or Samba OG in the Night Navy. Um, this is a GR colorway. I think it looks super sick for those who just want a basic pair of shoes that are their daily drivers but want it a darker color because a lot of those Samba classic colors are white, black, white, black, blue, you know, etc. Um, I would highly recommend that Night Navy looks amazing. Fire, fire, fire shoe. If you're trying to build a rotation, you got to start with those staples, those beaters, those everyday classic shoes, and then you can kind of like build your way up. Another cool thing, Adidas Spezial. They released quite a few um, Spezial pairs, and I'll put up a few of my favorites here. Uh, they released a black and neon green um, Samba, I believe. It was a Spezial Samba, and I thought those looked fantastic. Those give me like nightclub vibe slash like retro futuristic vibes. Um, big, big fan of the Spezial stuff. I wish that Adidas would um, try and communicate the value of Spezial in the US market a little bit more, but I understand that's probably hard to do, but I do think that it would be worthwhile. Spezial is, honestly, they have such cool products that I think you guys should definitely look at their releases and a lot of them are extremely wearable. I think that's where Adidas really does shine, where they have cool looking shoes, but all, all, almost all their shoes are like fire. They're like wearable, wearable shoes. Their classic sneakers are A1. Now, moving on to the clothing. The acronym P38E version 1.1.1 just dropped. Um, sold out, obviously, but I've been wearing that a lot. One of my favorite pair of pants right now. Review coming soon. But ever since I got them in, I haven't really been able to like take them off. They're like my everyday uh, sort of pants. Again, very aggressive design, but I think that comes with having an acronym product. A lot of the pants, you don't want you don't want a basic pair of pants when you're getting it from acronym and you're paying so much for it. You want something that stands out and something that is very thoughtfully made. So P38. Post Archive Factions um, Black Friday sale just happened. I really like their 5.1 down jacket as well as their technical running jacket. I haven't picked anything up from PATH in quite a while. I think I had like a t-shirt way back then, um, but I definitely want to pick up uh, their running jacket or their down jacket soon because I really do like the styling of it as well as that like that zipper design that's like sort of wavy. You get what I'm saying? I think that's like, ooh, super fire. JLAL just released their Autumn Winter 23 and they have some super, super hits. I really think that with each coming collection, um, JLAL is getting more and more comfortable in their own skin. And originally they were being a little bit criticized for being too early Kiko adjacent, but I do think that they're growing more into their own where it's that stylistic, Gorp-esque vibe and I think it's like it's getting there. It's getting there. I think he's cooking He's cooking real hard and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do next So I saw this um, a few days ago and I haven't heard of this brand before. It's called Jean Yi um, They have a running jacket that I thought was really really sick. It's a low-key smaller brand I saw it on like a Japanese page um, I really do like one the styling that they had as well as just the look of the jacket just looks super sick I will leave everything Link in the description down below um, if you guys are interested. Again, none of this stuff is sponsored, so like check it out if you guys are interested. Goldwyn Zero. Um, Goldwyn Zero is a sub brand of Goldwyn where they release, I believe most of their Goldwyn Zero stuff is done by rotating designers as well as a few of their internal collaborators. Um, Jean-Luc from JLL 
worked on Goldwyn Zero. Um, I think they have very, very cool products. Kind of expensive because a lot of their stuff is made in Japan. Uh, but Mainline Goldwyn is fire as well. They had a mill jacket, like a puffer jacket. That was super sick as well. But Goldwyn Zero, super sick. If you guys are looking for high quality, well-made, uh, Gorp-esque uh, stuff, Goldwyn is where to go. I love um, my three layer vortex jacket that I got from them. Um, I'm a big fan of them. They actually have a store in San Francisco, their main store in San Francisco. Um, I go down there like every now and then check out some of the new stuff. So, um, very, very cool stuff from Goldwyn Zero. This is never that. Um, they have a really cool jacket that I just saw. Uh, they are a Korean streetwear brand, but I really do like it when streetwear brands sort of diversify more into their cut and sew and kind of get a bit more involved because I think this jacket is flames. Fucking bone apple teeth. Fire as fuck, especially in that gray color or that that backer gray. Yeah, you. Uh, Haven is a Toronto um, retailer slash brand. Uh, they have been doing their own cut and sew and apparel for a few years now. And I just saw that they have a jacket called the Turbine Jacket. It looks super, super good. I love the look and I love that Haven takes something that's more of like a classic silhouette and adds like technical details to it and also gives it that little like almost luxury but not like luxury crazy, you know, um, that sort of vibe. I really, really dig in the Turbine Jacket. Um, hopefully I'll be able to pick up that soon maybe for their, like their winter sale or something like that um, i'm a big fan of honestly a lot of their stuff um, they are priced a little bit heavier but they're from everything that i hear they're made really really well and i can't wait to pick up some of their stuff and another smaller brand that i thought was really interesting is called the wild things um, they have a w2ls level 8 cold weather parka so i'm assuming the level 8 means the level eight in terms of the warmth of it because I know the vintage Patagonia uh, Mars stuff um, have like, I believe I have like a level four jacket as well as a level six jacket or something like that. But it is essentially like a layering system to keep you warm and then keep you uh, as free as possible. So you have that multiple levels of apparel and layering. Uh, so that like level eight is like a really, really thick parka jacket, cold weather jacket, but I just love the styling of it. And I've never heard of this brand before. I just saw it on some Japanese page and I thought it looked super, super sick. So now talking about upcoming releases and rumors. Uh, so talking about ASICs again, my favorite, um, is the ASICs Novalis Gel Terramoya Spring Summer 24. Um, it is the same silhouette as the Terramoya, except uh, instead of this faux leather, it's going to be a mesh all over. I believe I saw a white and red pair as well as a white and blue pair. I thought both of those were kind of interesting takes on this and I do like the molded foam on that upper instead of this molded leather. Um, this leather, although it looks cool, it doesn't feel the greatest. Um, it feels relatively cheap and synthetic, um, but I think it makes it up with the silhouette just being super, super unique and very slimmed down. Um, another release that is going to be happening spring, summer 24 is that I heard that the Stash Air Max 95 is coming out sometime in 2024. So I think that's going to be really sick. I hope that it is a little bit of a wider release because the Stash 95 just hasn't come out in so long that I hope that people are able to get their hands on it. Maybe they're trying to reinvigorate uh, Stash's um, Nike collaborations because I know that they're releasing um, a Futura Dunk and maybe some more artist collaborations. So that'd be nice to see. So Solomon is collaborating with uh, GR10K. Um, they have some really cool silhouettes. Uh, coming up. I really like the colors that they picked as well as I like that they didn't pick the the classic like You know like XT6 or XT4 that they kind of chose a weird model So I think it would be really really cool to see again that slimmed down uh, Silhouette being used a lot more 
So for all my Jound fiends out there, another Jound 2002R, but this is the Gore-Tex uh, 2002R with the same sort of bungee rope laces that were in the, I believe, 990V4, that, that like Parisian Knight, I think that's what the color name was. Um, looks cool. Uh, not a big fan of how the green works with the black. I think it kind of clashes too much. And again, I wasn't a big fan of the brown and the black as well. So I think it kind of, it's that sort of, same sort of vibe, but I don't like it. <laughs> you know, uh, like you guys might like it and it might be weather ready, um, which I think is really sick and great utility, but just the colors don't work for me and I'm just not a huge fan of it. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the blue color that they just came out with for the 2002R. I was kind of, it was kind of lukewarm at least for how I received it. And it looks like the prices aren't going for very much. So maybe a lot of people weren't super, super into it as well. Finally, it looks like Jerry Lorenzo, Fear of God, Adidas Athletics, Fear of God Athletics, whatever it's called. Um, finally, they're going to be releasing their collaboration first week or second week of December. We have been waiting for so many years for it to come out. Um, finally, we got a sneak peek of it at their uh, show at the Hollywood Bowl. And now, finally, it's going to be coming out. They have three models, I believe, or four models. They have a low top and a high top version of the Rivalry, I believe. Um, they have their performance model that Pusho was perform. I guess he performed, but it's supposed to be a performance basketball model. And then they have a low top runner. Um, I don't know what the names of all of these are. I believe that it's gonna be like something like the 86 high, 86 low or something for those. I don't know what the predator looking uh, performance model is gonna be called, but looks cool. I like how they look. I'm curious to get them in hand. I'm hopeful, but I also don't know how much of a big effect this collaboration is going to be because I know that Adidas is really riding on the fact that Jerry's going to have a huge moment with it, which I do think he will, but I don't know if it can really match the level of excitement and the level of vigor that initially happened with Ye, with, um, with his Yeezy brand. I don't think it'll match that height, at least not to me yet. Maybe give it some time, maybe it will, but I'm cautiously optimistic for it. I talked about this in a previous video, but is the Nike Sakai Magascape, where it combines, I believe it was the Nike Maga and then the Footscape. Super cool. Probably one of my favorite Sakai Nike products. Um, I definitely think it's the best of so long. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the blazers, etc. But this one, this is fire. I think this is fire. I know they did a few Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, Paris, wasn't a huge fan of that. But this, with that classic black and light blue and gray color, ooh, sign me the fuck up. Fire, fire. It's that hiking aesthetic, high top, ooh. Don't get me started. So. I'm hoping to pick that up. I know it's releasing sometime in December. Keep my eyes peeled. You guys should as well. So Adidas um, is collaborating with an advertising agency called No Title. Uh, they have been teasing these four pair of Sambas for such a long time. Um, I believe they had a very, very small release in Asia, but there's no news about it. So I have a feeling that it's gonna be coming out sometime at the end of December because I've been seeing more and more Paris sort of circulating. Um, I'm really hoping that it comes over to the States or at least that we'll have a chance of getting them, even in Europe, to be honest. Um, I'm really hoping so. So um, I really do like the pairs that they have. Not a huge fan of the cow fur and the fur pairs, but they have like two other ones. Super fire, super fuego. Speaking of Asia exclusive Adidas, at least as of now, um, Foot Industry is a a um, 
an Asian brand. I forgot if they were based in Japan or if they were based in China, but it's one of the two. And they're releasing four pairs of shoes. Um, their previous release, they re released, I believe, three. The Superstar, which I have, um, as well as the Rivalry, as well as one other pair. I don't remember. Oh, the Campus, um, as well as another one. I it was another one, I think. Um, they were super fire. Uh, they had a very small release. I believe, actually, I just checked. They're they're available on Adidas um, .jp, uh, so if you have a proxy, you can get them. I love my Superstar. Keep in mind, size down one full size for the Superstar because there is no padding, but the leather is immaculate. Um, that's probably one of my favorite Superstars of all time. Um, so they are releasing a few new pairs. Um, looks like Adidas gave them a little bit more freedom. I really do like their long tongue, I believe they're putting a long tongue on a gazelle, two of them, super fire. And then they also are doing a football pair. Um, I forgot the model name, but I'm gonna put it up somewhere here. Fire, I think that is one of the coolest pairs and the leather looks immaculate. So foot industry always does amazing with their materials and I'm very excited to potentially get it in hand. Last time they did a very small drop on their website and then that was the only way I was able to get it uh, without using like a forwarding address or a proxy. Cause when that dropped, there was no news of it releasing anywhere else. Checking now, it's available on adidas.jp. So maybe I'll pick up the campus as well, which I heard is really, really nice. Two Air Force One, eh, what? Two Air Force Ones that are slated to come out. Uh, the Fragment Air Force One, which I don't like. And then the Elix Air Force One, which I do like. Um, the Fragment Air Force One um, had a small release at a shop called The Weekend, which I believe Hiroshi Fujiwara is involved in. But there are conflicting information if it's truly a collaboration or if it's just a custom pair that was customized and Im not embossed, but debossed or embossed the Fragment logo as well as the Fragment sole. Uh, sort of like what Travis Scott did with the Utopia Air Force Ones, where it's just a plain pair of Air Force Ones and he just laser printed the Utopia logo on the ankle. Um, while the Elix Air Force One is a true collaboration. And I know people are saying that, you know, ah, it's just an Air Force One. They did remove a panel and they essentially fused a panel. And then they put that classic um, metal eyelet that they did on the Van Style 36 for their first, way back, this was way, way, way back when uh, like Elix was first coming out, they had a Vans collaboration with the Style 36 and then they did that same sort of uh, like metal, like eyelet clip on, on uh, like one of their lace holes. Another pair that I think is really cool is the Norda Haven collaboration. Norda is a footwear company that is relatively new but they are making waves while using some really cool, interesting products. Uh, they are most known for their 001 and 002. I believe Satisfy actually did a collaboration with Norda as well. Um, like Norda's models are using high quality materials, like I said, high durable materials like Dyneema. Um, so I think that Haven is just a natural collaboration because I also believe Norda is a Canadian brand. Um, and then it is a slip on sort of running shoe and it has Dyneema, it is very utility focused. So I think the collaboration just makes sense overall. And I think it, I think it really came out pretty nicely and it fits in with the Haven aesthetic very, very well. That sort of city urban dweller aesthetic. The new balance that I wanna talk about is the M991WIN, uh, Urban Winter. It is essentially a light version, a white version of the Jown 991s. Uh, um, I think this is a great shoe. Super clean. Um, I believe they used um, the right amount of white, what? right amount of white on the paneling of the shoes. Um, I think the N, no, N logo being black is just like, it's like bam in your face, you know? Um, I think this is a great alternative for those who couldn't get the Jown 991s. I think this is super fire, super fuego, and I think you guys should consider it if you guys are looking for a pair of 991s or a classic, like everyday pair of New Balances. The Jown uh, Reebok Classics. Um, this is a white cream 
uh, just classic, classic, I guess. Um, oddly enough, I actually fuck with them. I like them more than the first classic that they released. Um, I did a review of those years ago, but I actually kind of fuck with these. I like the laces that are coming with them. Um, I like the look of them. The quality looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm hoping to pick them up uh, soon. I'm also curious about the All Black Club C. I'm also thinking about picking those up as well, maybe if I can find a deal. The Reebok Classic is coming out, I believe, first week of December, if I remember correctly, on Chown's website, as well as, I believe, as well, Reebok.com. The laces look great on this pair. They look nice and thick and heritage. Um, and then I know that the marketing material said that it is the original material that they used on the classic, so that gives it even more of that heritage vibe. Let me know what you guys think. New Balance is releasing a, I believe this is a Japan exclusive Boral pack. It is the New Balance 550 and the 580. Both of those, the details on them look insane. I know a lot of people are over the 550, and I tell you, the 550 is still a good model. The 580 is a sick model as well, but the 550 is a good model. He's a good man. I think the details and the materials used on both pairs look great, look immaculate. Um, I hope that, although they are region exclusive, uh, I hope that there are enough pairs to where some of them can trickle their way into the US because I'd love to see it in hand and kind of feel the materials and look at them. And I think they would wear extremely well just because they're already that sort of distress. You can distress them even more, repair them even more, and get that going. I love how they look in that wabi-sabi sort of vibe. Next up is, I guess this is my last one, the Atmos Gel Kyona 14 under my car. Um, it's really cool. They come with a carabiner. Um, it's very sick, clean colorway by Atmos um, and a collab or I guess a triple collaboration with Atmos, Asics, and under my car, which is a small Japanese company. Very, very sick. Check them out. Um, I don't believe that there's a lot of hype or, you know, people fiending after them, but I think they're a very low-key, cool-looking pair of gel Kayanos. Now, talking about the archive, uh, the Kiko Asics Gel Burrs 1. I did mention it already, but I think it's important to go back to it, because this release, I believe, 2017, which was when uh, Virgil and the 10 was coming out, and I think Kiko was one of the ones to release that sort of gorp, or adjacent um, footwear and design burst. And look at how that's trickled and gone everywhere from Arteryx jackets to people buying Valence and people going back into like, you know, like vintage bins and getting old Gore-Tex jackets, etc. Oakley, like factory team, you know, and all the stuff that they do and this whole resurgence of the retro runner, I think it really did start from Kiko. Um, the Gelbers was an incredibly important shoe as it was one of the first and I know when they first dropped people weren't immediately drawn to them because it was I believe the retail was kind of high for a pair of ASICs at least at that time I believe it was something like 300 USD um, and then they only released a hand pair handful of each color uh, black lime and this and man look at how far we've come since then it is amazing to see um, the ideas of this kind of trickling almost everywhere, like even in like luxury companies as well. Another thing to look back on is Undercover's Gyukakuso. Um, they were very early to that running sort of aesthetic where now a lot of people are very into running, very into fitness, at least post COVID. But you know, it was done years ago. And I really do think that Gyukakuso, at least their most, his latest collaborations and latest releases didn't hit as hard. The old stuff, I think, ages so beautifully into current. I think a lot of the designs that were done back then fit amazingly now, especially like first handful of seasons. Like Gyakuso is amazing. I, I really hope that they might release some of the older stuff again because the newer Gyukaku so just feels like just street wear, casual street wear. While back then, kind of felt like that blend of fitness, urban dweller, tech-esque, running, you know, focused, but design and cool colors, etc. So I really do hope that Nike kind of rejuvenates the Gyukaku so vibe. Next up is um, Adidas did a collaboration with a magazine, E-Wax. 
uh, to release a handball special. They did three colorways that went pretty under the radar this past year. Um, I know it's not part of the archive, but I do think that a lot of people are sleeping on them. They released a brown and orange, um, a white and black, and then a dark navy and a blue color. I think they're super sick. Um, they're a high quality pair of special handballs, which are kind of spot, like, you know, uh, like Samba adjacent, but not really. Um, I think they're a great pair of shoes. I think you can get them on eBay as well as a few other websites um, online if you're looking for that cool pair of shoes but like slightly off the beaten path where you don't want to just buy Whales of Honor. Um, I think this is a fantastic uh, pair to cut. Uh, a pair of shoes that I've recently kind of, kind of rediscovered and now are kind of vibing after is the Taxi Dunk Lows, both the green as well as the blue taxis. Both of them are a pair of shoes that I've looked at when I was like living in LA, you know, basically a kid. I was like looking at them at like Riff LA, which is like a historic uh, sneaker store in like Little Tokyo. And I was like, yo, those are super sick. I want them, but I can't afford them. Now I'm on the hunt for them. I really do want to go back and collect all those really fire SBs that I really liked and that I really wanted to get from back then to now. Uh, luckily, a lot of the SB hype has sort of died down and a lot of those old pairs, I know people are trying to sell them for 2000, etc., have trickled on down. So I'm on the hunt and trying to look for a, a uh, decent pair, wearable or maybe even not wearable, but for a good price and I can restore them myself. So yeah, keeping an eye out. But both, a lot of those gold uh, box and like, you know, um, like silver box era stuff is fantastic. And I, you, you guys should just really just go back and just kind of look at them and see like, oh, the concept of this is amazing, or that looks great, or that's very wearable and stuff like that. So there's tons of gems out there. And another one that I think is historic is the Ricardo Tishi Air Force One High and Low. Um, Ricardo Tishi, this was one of the first times that Nike really did do those like high-end collaborations with um, designers, especially during that era of like Watch the Throne, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy sort of era. Um, I think the TC Air Force Ones were amazing. The quality was fantastic. Um, the back tab was like quadruple layered. Such a sick shoe with on a tan, veg tan upper. It's fantastic. And you can really find some of them, although they're worn on Grail for a pretty good price. And they're one of the best Air Force Ones, in my opinion, of all time. Um, I, I do just do think they deserve some more love. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching Coffee Break of November. Um, I will talk to you guys next time. Comment down below what are your favorite releases that are coming up or anything that you're looking forward to um, or anything that you've picked up or any sort of archive stuff or stuff from way back when that you want to bring up to the forefront. I'd love to get the discussion going. I do respond to comments so we can always get it going. Uh, follow my Instagram at kevin.img and um, I will see you guys next month. Talk to you later. Peace.